Okay, so the Arch Linux that we're going to be installing is going to be on stock Chrome OS. You might be thinking, how is that even possible? Well, Chrome OS has possibly one of the best VM container systems on the market. It's just most people don't even look into it. And why I say that is it integrates really tightly with the operating system. So anything we put on our system is going to show right up on our Chromebook, which is really cool. So this is the desktop right here. We're going to just go from absolute stock settings to uh, replacing what usually is there, which is Debian, which is older packages, but there's some new stuff coming out, such as GPU acceleration and drivers and all kinds of coolness through the VMs. We'll get started by going into our settings, just typing Linux, and we're just going to set up a fresh one. We'll just turn this on. If you've already turned it on, that's okay. I'll also step through it. Just hit next, next. All the settings in this doesn't matter because we're going to be deleting this as soon as it's created. On that screen, pay close attention to that username that is super important. Uh, that username is going to dictate a lot of different things. It's going to make this process a lot easier if you remember it. Also, uh, don't change it from your stock settings. Uh, a lot of times when you change it, it just doesn't sync quite right with Chrome OS. You can get it there, but it requires a lot more steps, which I won't be going over today. All right, and there we go. We have it right there. Uh, what I like to do, just shut it down. And then we're going to go into our Chrome browser, hold Control alt t to get into cross-shell. From cross-shell, we actually look at our VMCs or our VMs on this machine. This is what was just created. Well, I don't like how Google creates these things, so we're just going to destroy it in typical Titus fashion. And we're just going to go Termina. This destroys this VM, just blasts it out, just tosses it in the garbage can. And then we're just going to go VMC and we'll do a start termina. This is gonna go ahead, recreate that VM and uh, push us right into shell. Now we can actually see what kind of containers. So there's actually three levels to this operating system you need to know about. There's the Chrome OS, then there's the VM, and then there's the containers inside the VM. Now these all work in tandem, but you need to be cognizant of which shell you're in because you could be in three different shells. From here, let's just do an LXC list. You can see we don't have any containers in here, so we need to create one. So we'll do a VMC container termina for the actual VM that we're in, and we'll name this one Arch. Now, Penguin is actually the stock setting. So if you actually start this up again, you'll see a Penguin one. We could actually name this Penguin, but if for whatever reason you start up something, it'll wipe out all your progress. If uh, Chrome OS sees a bad container, it'll just delete it and recreate it. So really important, that's why we rename this Arch. We'll rename it Penguin later. And this is what we're gonna be using, Arch Linux, the current version from linuxcontainers.org. If you're overseas, you probably wanna pick a different uh, mirror than US. US is obviously American, which is where I'm at. Uh, we did it from the wrong shell, as I said before, so we can actually just come right back here and we'll just copy and paste this command right in and hit enter. Now this will take a bit, probably about two minutes, depending on your connection. Uh, here at the house, this usually is about that long on a 100 meg download connection. And there we go. This is actually very common to see this error, totally okay. And from here, we're able to jump in and start configuring this container. All right, so now let's get inside that VM and check to see what our containers are now. So we'll do a VSH Termina and then we just do an LXC list. And from here, you can see that we have one, it is running. If it isn't running, you would wanna do an LXC start and then the name of the container. So now we're gonna to connect to that container and open up a bash prompt. So we'll do an LXC, execute, arch, which is the container name, dash dash, it's space, dash dash, space. That, that kind of goes against most traditional syntax. I just wanna specify there's two spaces here, and then we type bash. And from here, I'd like to just do an update, just do an SYU. This pulls all the latest databases, packages and stuff, and updates it. Now, one thing I like to do on Arch is update its repos. If you're using like a different Linux bin, usually you don't have to do this, but Arch has some particularly terrible update servers uh, by default, and we need to fix that. Otherwise, this is gonna take an hour <laughs> to download from some of these servers. So we're gonna just do a pacman s pacman contrib. 
And this is just like an extra package for downloading like Reflector. And Reflector is going to fix this slow download we're experiencing because I've seen sometimes the stock update servers can be like one meg downloads, but I, I, I can, my, my connection allows me to get up to 10 and you know, that's going to speed things up considerably. So we're going to just do a reflector, age 10, country's going to be US, fastest mirrors 5, and then I like to do a sort by rate, says how fast it's going to be, and then finally we just save it out to ETC Pac-Man mirror list. Uh, usually you would back up the mirror list, but I don't care, I think we'll, we'll be fine. This process usually takes about a minute to do. Uh, and then you're good to go. We'll do an update after this just to make sure, but you'll see it'll go through and fix a lot of stuff. Now, one thing I'm seeing here is we are getting a lot of rsync errors, so I'm actually going to do a Pac-Man S rsync, and we'll just uh, get that installed right now, and then we're going to rerun that reflector. So you'd want to install rsync and reflector here instead of just rsync, and now we can run it, and we shouldn't see all these errors. I was like, wait a second, this is too many errors. All right, it's finished. I think that took about five minutes to curate my list, but now I should have a perfect run. When I go ahead and update packages, it should be very, very fast. You can already see some of the download there so much better. It gets rid of all those bad servers that Arch gives you by default. Well, with that done, we can continue configuring this. Next up, we're going to add the user to the wheel group and make sure that we can use it. Now, if you're unsure of what your username is, I like to just do a listing of home. So we'll just do user A, lowercase a, capital G, caps do matter, wheel group, and then my username. Uh, <laughs> helps if you do user mod here. And there's one more thing we need to do is set our password for the user as well. Actually, a couple more things to do. Password and then our username. So we'll set that up. Password set. Now we need to make sure we have an AUR helper because we will be touching into that because with we need some services that Chrome or Google has made that interface and make that seamless transition without those services started. If Google doesn't see them, they will just delete this entire container and then start from scratch with Debian. So to install that, we need a couple dependencies here. So we're just going to do a Pacman s git. And then we're also going to need base dash devil. Uh, that gives us all the build tools that are required for building any programs in the future. You don't necessarily probably need base dot devil, but since we're going to be building a ton of stuff, I just recommend go ahead and get it now. We'll just hit enter here and enter again. And this will go ahead, go out and download everything. So even though it seems like it was a waste to spend all that time doing those mirrors, look at these download rates I'm getting now so much better than the stock settings. And now we'll just configure our AUR. We'll just git clone https aur dot archlinux.org forward slash yay dash git dot git. Now we need to take ownership of it with our user because we're not going to build it as the root user. That would basically break your system. So let's do a CHO and then your username colon space a lot of guides actually have you put your username, colon, and then your username again. Uh, it, you don't need to do that. And then we just do a dot for our current directory, forward slash, and then yay, dash git. And now if we do a ls dash al for an all listing, you can see we have ownership of this. And now we're ready to go into yay, dash git. And we're going to switch user to your username. From here, we just do a make package dash si. Oh, <laughs> says it's not in the sudoers file. Let's look at vsudo real fast. Well, actually, we'll exit and do vsudo. Go shift gg, this two capital Gs. Uh, think of good game <laughs> with all caps. It'll take you to the end of the file. Scroll up to where you see wheel. Use x, x on your keyboard. This deletes one character by pressing x. We need to delete two. And then we hold shift and press zz, like going to sleep, but caps. On the Z's, that saves and quits a V. And now let's go back into here. And finally, let's try that make package one more time. And now we hit yes. And it just executed that command for us, which is great. We'll just hit enter again. And now we have yay installed. We can test that. We have our proper AUR just by doing an SYU here. Should go right through. Everything's up to date. 
ready to roll. Now let's get those packages from Google that uh, interface with Chrome OS. And we'll do guest tools dot get. Hit enter to this, and we should be prompted with a couple options here. Uh, we'll just hit enter, and then probably another enter once we get this screen, and enter again. And now we'll install all these packages, and we'll almost be ready to shut this down and then restart it uh, using the actual interface. This is just a one-time setup using Crash, but once we do it, we'll have Arch on everything, any programs we add in Arch will get added to Chrome OS. So it's like a great tight integration that we're doing right now, which is fantastic. I just haven't seen anybody actually show anybody how to do it. I'll make an article probably on my website, ChrisTitus.com, kind of uh, just as a bullet point to follow along with this. Uh, we do need to get one more uh, Wayland package that was not installed here. And we'll just do xorg-x Wayland. And the final thing is to enable those services from our Arch instance to make the integration happen. Now that they're installed, we just got to enable them. To do that, we're just going to do a system CTL dash dash user. This says, hey, we're as a user. We can't do this as root. Remember, if you're getting errors and all kinds of stuff, you need to be doing this as your user, not root. And we'll install the Summelier services. Probably butchering the name there, but <laughs> we'll go ahead and do that. Dot service and make sure you put in enable the service. We don't need to necessarily start it because we're gonna be shutting down this container after we're finished and we're running into an issue here. So actually I'm gonna go ahead and exit and exit LXC console arch and then hit enter and then let's sign in as our user. Probably just didn't like the fact we were running as bash. So we'll go ahead, sign in. And now let's do system CTL dash user. Let's see if it was in there. And then we need the dash X service. And then we need to create low density service. So we'll just do a one here for that one. And then a one here for this guy. So it's four services in total. Make sure yours looks exactly like this. And then we can exit. To go ahead and detach from our console, control A, Q to come back to here. And then you can see LXC list. Oh, we have all these container started so we'll just do an lxc stop arch this will stop the container now we need to rename that to lxc rename arch to penguin lxc list i'm actually i think what happened was i went ahead and didn't exit all the way out so let's exit this to whole terminal we'll just do two exits to exit everything quit here let's right click here let's shut down that that instance just to make sure everything's good and then let's launch and see what we get. Should start the virtual machine and everything there. Now the moment of truth, let's just do a Neo fetch. Yeah, look at that. It's a Neo fetch. Arch Linux on Chrome OS. Absolutely perfect. Now let's uh, show you the power of this by just installing one of my favorite, most used open source programs of all time. And that would be GIMP. I uh, just kind of show you the speed difference. In my prior video, I showed Chrome Brew running natively on here. Let's see how much performance uh, difference there is between native and also just going through the VMs. You'll see how well optimized these Chrome OSs are. And now I think when you install it there, let's see if it pulls into our global menu, Linux apps. And there's GIMP. Now we can click it and we'll pin that, pin that bad boy. Oh, it's looking pretty mighty fine. Uh, let's see what the latency looks like. This will get a lot better once we get GUI or, or graphics acceleration, but um, let's just do, eh, very usable, very usable. And we'll just do some text here, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay, cool. So everything's good here. We'll quit out and discard changes. I'm not a big fan of Chrome browser and I wanted to install Brave. Well, you can actually use that now. Let's just go Brave and we'll just grab the bin file so we're not actually having to compile all this and we'll hit yes. All right, so now we have Brave installed. Let's try that again. We'll just come into here, look at our Linux apps. Oh, there's Brave. We'll go ahead and launch it through the VM. Yeah, sure, we'll make it our default. And now we could pin this, or actually it's already pinned, sweet. Skip the welcome tour, and now we're using the full desktop version of Brave 
in a Chrome OS. Because if you try to do this through the Play Store, you get like this terrible mobile app Brave browser, which is just garbage. So with this, we'll have all of Brave browser and any other app we want to use directly from Arch Linux. And the best part about this is, is we're going to be installing whatever we want. New drivers come out, new packages. We could use Mesa Git here and get on that bleeding edge and start tinkering around to do AAA titles, which is really what I want to do. But with all that said, I'll see you in the next one.